Oh, hello there. Professor Poole here. Today we will talk about water balance. To do this, we will use what is called the Langelier Saturation Index. In order to calculate the Langelier Saturation Index, one must know the actual alkalinity, pH, calcium hardness, water temperature, and total dissolved solids. Once we have these numbers from our actual water test, utilizing the charts, we can see that we have three different columns in the chart to our left. Temperature, calcium hardness, and total carbonate alkalinity. The value is what you actually tested from your pool water sample. For every value, there is a corresponding factor. For example, if our temperature was 46 degrees, our temperature factor would be 0 0.2. If our alkalinity tested at 50 parts per million, our total carbonate alkalinity factor would be 1.7. Beneath that chart, we have our total dissolved solids factors. If your total dissolved solids level is less than 1,000 parts per million, your total dissolved solids factor would be 12.1. If your total dissolved solids factor was greater than 1,000 parts per million, your total dissolved solids factor would be 12.2. Beneath the worksheet on the right, we have a chart indicating the balance of water. If our saturation index results give us a number between negative 0.3 and positive 0.3, that would indicate that the water is in balance. Anything greater than positive 0.3 would indicate that the water is scale forming. Anything less than negative 0.3 would indicate that the water is corrosive. In this example, our water test results show that we have a pH of 7.0, a total alkalinity of 80 parts per million, a calcium hardness level of 250 parts per million, a temperature of 83 degrees, and a total dissolved solids level of 900 parts per million. The first thing we should do is input these numbers into our worksheet. Our pH is 7.0, our total alkalinity is 80 parts per million, our calcium hardness is 250 parts per million, our temperature is 83 degrees. We do not subtotal these numbers. Our total dissolved solids level is 900 parts per million. Next we will find the corresponding factors. Looking at pH, the factor is the value. When it comes to pH in the Langelier Saturation Index, it is what it is. We have a pH level of 7.0, so our pH factor is 7.0. Next we will find our total carbonate alkalinity factor. Our alkalinity value was 80 parts per million. If we look at the chart, we can see that 80 parts per million is not present. Whenever we do not have the exact number, we must round to the next higher number. 80 parts per million will round up to 100 parts per million for use of this index, giving us an alkalinity factor of 2.0. Next, we'll look at our calcium hardness. Our calcium hardness value is 250 parts per million. Looking at the chart to the left, we can see that 250 parts per million has a calcium factor of 2.0. Next, we'll look at our temperature factor. Our temperature value, our actual water temperature, was 83 degrees. Looking at the temperature column on the left, we can see that 83 degrees is not one of the options, so we must round again to the next higher number, giving us a temperature factor of 0.7. These numbers so far, the factors we've input, pH, total alkalinity, calcium hardness, and temperature, we will add those together to determine our subtotal. 7 plus 2 plus 2 plus 0.7 equals 11.7. Our subtotal is 11.7. Next we will input our total dissolved solids factor using the chart on the left. Our total dissolved solids level was 900 parts per million. 
looking at our TDS chart, it tells us that anything less than 1,000 parts per million, we are to use 12.1. Anything greater than 1,000 parts per million, we are to use 12.2. 900 parts per million is less than 1,000 parts per million, so we will use 12.1. When we input our total dissolved solids factor, it's important to understand that we must always subtract this number from the subtotal. 11.7 minus 12 gives us a saturation index of negative 0.4. If we look at the chart beneath the worksheet, we can see that negative 0.4 is corrosive. Negative 0.4 is less than negative 0.3. Again, anything between negative 0.3 and positive 0.3 is in balance. Anything greater than positive 0.3 is scale forming. Anything less than negative 0.3 is corrosive. So our current water sample with a saturation index of negative 0.4 is corrosive. The first thing we would do is look at our values, our actual water test results, and determine which value was not in the ideal range. The ideal range for pH is 7.4 to 7.6. The ideal range for total alkalinity is 80 to 120 parts per million. The ideal range for calcium hardness is 200 to 400 parts per million. There is not an ideal range for temperature nor is there an ideal range for total dissolved solids. So looking at what we have, the pH being the only value that is not in the ideal range, that would then be our greatest opportunity to correct our corrosive water. So if we adjusted our pH from 7.0 to 7.4, again the ideal range being from 7.4 to 7.6, how would this change our end result? In the alkalinity at 80 parts per million, the calcium hardness at 250, our temperature at 83 degrees, and our total dissolved solids at 900 parts per million. Again, entering the factors, remember pH is what it is, so the value is the same as the factor. A pH of 7.4, our new value, would then have a factor of 7.4. Alkalinity at 80 parts per million remains at 2. Calcium hardness 50 parts per million remains at 2. Our temperature at 83 degrees remains at 0 0.7. This changes our total to 12.1. Again, 7.4 plus 2.0 plus 2.0 plus 0.7 equals 12.1. Our calcium factor did not change as we left our TDS level at 900 parts per million. If we subtract 12.1, because again, you always subtract your total dissolved solid factor from the subtotal. If we subtract 12.1 from 12.1, our new saturation index value would be zero. If we look at the chart beneath the worksheet, we can see that zero falls in between negative 0.3 and positive 0.3. This would mean that our water is balanced. It is neither corrosive nor scale forming.